Hello everyone, I hope you're having an awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to cover some more Bar Rescue Bars and how they're doing now thanks to your continued support. So, without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys! Oasis Hookah Bar Recent college graduate and soon-to-be father Jesse Hill put 50,000 of his own savings to make his dream of owning a hookah bar come true back in 2010. After being introduced to hookahs by a frat brother, he thought it would be an easy business to do. Once he finally opened the Oasis, it was the first and only hookah bar in Omaha which pushed many to visit. At the business's peak, Hill was making about $30,000 a month, though things went downhill when he hired an Oasis regular named Corey to become a manager. Not only was there a decline in service, but the cleanliness standards and accountability also plummeted. Rather than fix the clear issues with his bar, Hill secludes himself in his office, leaving Corey to destroy his business even further. Having a huge $100,000 debt, it was time for Oasis to get the special help of the bar rescue legend, John Taffer. Arriving feeling nothing but disappointment, Taffer frustratingly points out that the bar's exterior is bland. From the outside, the bar rescue host and his experts watch as Hill sits in his office while his incompetent manager smokes potential profits away. Even worse, when Corey is asked how a hookah works, she rudely complains about how she doesn't know how that specific hookah works. Great customer service. Sending in some spies, it becomes clear that the bar is in disrepair with garbage being in plain view and chairs being unstable. Their experience was without a doubt horrible. The hookah hose was dirty and their drink was so poorly made that it makes one of the spies throw up. After Taffer headed into the bar, reprimanded the entire staff, and gave the place a thorough cleaning, things were going in the right direction. Renaming the bar to Taza Nightclub, Taffer wanted them to de-emphasize the hookah aspect since they were bad at keeping their devices clean. Though, Hill decided to rename the bar back to Oasis and reverse all of John's efforts in 2016, which only went poorly. Receiving tons of horrible Yelp reviews from people who got sick, Oasis eventually closed down, and deservingly so. Underground Wonder Bar Musician Lonnie Walker opened a live music joint called the Underground Wonder Bar back in 1989. Enjoying great success for 22 years, business began to decline in 2011 when the bar's building was sold to pave way for a development project. Consequently, she reopened the bar using $360,000 she borrowed from her family and friends. Since it was now relocated in the River North District, rent was astronomically higher, making everything difficult. For instance, the live music that they could afford wouldn't really resonate with their younger clientele. However, even when people proposed ways to fix these issues, the owner was way too stubborn to listen, which inevitably drove customers away. With their income bleeding and debts climbing to almost half a million dollars, it was time for the Underground Wonder Bar to get the aid of John Taffer. To the bar rescue host, the outside of Underground was way too colorful, resembling a pizza place for kids more than a drinking establishment. Additionally, Taffer expressed that the interior lacked any sophistication, which was in part due to the eccentric staff. As an example, Walker and her bandmates would take out small instruments and play around the bar in an attempt to entertain customers, but they just seemed really bored. Entering the bar after this weird display, Taffer notices that there are crayons around the bar and he begins to realize how disconnected Walker is from reality. She disregards Taffer's presence since she wasn't willing to let go of her true vision of the bar, but an employee named Jordan chases the bar rescue host down to show his willingness to make any changes necessary. Following this, Taffer brings in his experts to improve the staff's mixing and cooking skills, then makes the staff repaint the outside white to symbolize the bar's new beginning. Attempting a stress test, Walker displays zero enthusiasm, probably fueled by the changes, which pushes Taffer to angrily walk out. Although he does come back and Walker appears to begin embracing the idea of change, which is when things finally started to shift. Being torn down and rebuilt, the bar was renamed to Clear Bar, now rocking a clean white exterior with tall windows that gave a nice view into the interior. The inside was much more sophisticated thanks to the new furniture, sound system, and the eye-catching ice block behind the counter. Clear Bar didn't last very long, being changed very soon after the episode back to the Underground Wonder Bar, despite signing an agreement to keep that name. It should be pretty obvious, but while it did last a little longer after Walker reversed the changes, it closed down in 2017. Rocky Point Cantina Opening its doors in 2010, Rocky Point Cantina was a retirement investment of Fran and Mary Massimiano for their sons Jason and Scott. As a result of Scott's managerial inexperience, the bar was a disaster from the very beginning, but his younger brother Jason tried his very best to keep things afloat. Making good use of his powers to hire a new bartender named Anthony, who was a hardworking family friend, the two often butted heads. Additionally, since the bar was located close by to Arizona State University, Scott hired a local metal band to attract students in. However, he strangely decided to only open the bar whenever the band was scheduled to perform, which only hurt their profits. 
Considering their business was slowly going down the drain and Fran and Mary's retirement money was wasting away, they needed John Taffer's support. To get a customer's perspective, Taffer sends in two ASU students who had a horrible experience right off the bat. The brothers were in a verbal fighting match, their cocktails tasted like juice rather than alcohol, and it was shocking to hear that they didn't even serve draft beer despite having a tap. On top of all this, the counters were layered with filth and the girls could barely talk because of the ear-piercingly loud music. Sending in his experts, they were not only unimpressed by how piss poor the bartender's skills were, but they were disgusted by how dirty things were behind the counter. With numerous health code violations, the only way Taffer was going to help them is if they spent all night cleaning their nasty bar. Coming back the next day, everything was spotless, which is when the bar rescue host started to work his magic. Doing even more cleaning, giving the bar a new drink and food menu, and doing tons of renovations, Jason and Scott's bar was reborn. Being renamed to Havana Cabana Bar and Grill, the old bar's Mexican concept was replaced with a new pre-revolutionary Cuban nightlife theme. On the outside, the bar was coated with female-oriented colors in hopes that it would change the business's reputation of being unfriendly to the ladies. Sadly, things didn't go very smoothly for the bar after the rescue, since supposedly the bar rescue team failed to get some of the licenses they needed to make certain renovations, which caused a lot of issues. As a result, Havana Cabana went back to its old ways doing live performances without a live entertainment permit, and not even 5 months after the episode aired, the bar closed down for good, and the place is now a vacant lot. The Underworld Jazz Bender and Christy Chaos retired from the band life and decided on opening up a bar in Las Vegas back in 2011. Naming it The Underworld, it was stocked with horror decor, making it seem as if every day was Halloween. While they wanted to create a unique haunting experience, they achieved the exact opposite. Their displays were mediocre and laughable at best. The bar really dug its own grave since it had a handful of other issues like a lack of liquor on the shelves, no draft beer, terrible food, and poor customer service. What's worse, the owners seemingly kept a close eye on their employees, and this mistrust caused a lot of animosity between both groups. With each passing day, the underworld's future was becoming darker and darker, so it was urgent for them to call out to John Taffer. Considering the bar was located in one of the brightest tourist hubs in the world, being Las Vegas, the underworld lived up to its name. It was incredibly dark and barely noticeable in comparison to the other businesses in the area, which certainly hurt the bar. Sending in some recon, Taffer sends in a trio of ladies who are immediately greeted by a bartender named Jesse. They also notice that the owners oddly visit the cash register almost every half hour to check on the bar's earnings, which puts nothing but pressure and paranoia on the staff. Following this, Taffer decides to go in himself, meeting first with the employees who have some interesting things to say. Like how Jesse accuses the two owners of stealing tips from the other bartenders. Once the owners finally arrived into the conversation, this employee's claim was contradicted by the pair who put the blame on their workers instead. After an intense stress test, the argument from earlier was finally put to rest since it was revealed that the owners were to blame for a lot of the issues present. Through some discussion, things looked like they were going in the right direction since the staff was collectively able to agree upon the renovations that Taffer would make. Renamed from the underworld to the end, the outside was made to be much brighter and the interior was given a zombie apocalypse theme. They also received tons of new equipment including a new DJ booth, POS system, and better lighting. Several months later after the episode, sales went up by 40% with most of the reviews on Yelp being positive. People generally loved the concept, but there were those out there who weren't into zombies. Sadly, after the bar moved due to a collapsed roof in their original building, they were not able to keep up with their lease and inevitably closed down. How sad. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.